Hey, hey, mister, are you looking for some Apple news? Yeah, what you got? Man, I got the best Apple news you've ever heard. This shit will get you fucked up. Oh, man, where did you get it? It's all coming up right now on this episode of the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, welcome to the Infinite Loop Show. This is episode number 22. I am Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coglin. <laughs> that was pretty slick. I try. All right, so Casey Coglin, what's been going on this week? Um, I don't know if you guys have been like keeping up, but WWDC happened last week, mm-hmm. and they may or may not have announced a uh, new MacBook Pro and a whole new iOS and a whole new Mac OS. I think the whole community is still reeling from all of that business. Didn't we do a show about this last week? We did. We did. But now we know more. This is so, the aftermath. Indeed. You know, we've we've done the due diligence. We've We've looked into all of the things. All the things. All the things. And now we've piled them all up into a nice things pile. And we're going to divulge it all out to you, the listener. We do this all for you. All for you. Right. We wouldn't do it otherwise. (laughs) I wouldn't. I literally would not be doing this in my spare time. No. No. (laughs) And she sure as hell wouldn't be doing it for me. So we do it for everybody else. Indeed. By the, Indeed. I, I have to say though, that was a uh, a great get up that you had for the intro. It was really just sunglasses. I know, you <laughs> need to calm down. I wear those daily. Do you? <laughs> those are my sunglasses. That's <laughs> what I wear to drive in. Okay. Drive my car like this. <laughs> How do you drive your car? <laughs> That's a damn big steering wheel. Yeah, it gets bigger every time I do it. <laughs> <laughs> you drive a truck? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, let's get to the news, shall we? Yeah, we have lots of it. All right. Um, can I take this first one? Um, my guess. I guess I might as well because you've got the second one all to yourself. <laughs> yeah. And this is all me. about me anyway. <laughs> uh, an Apple spokesman, Tim Cook, said that uh, <laughs> new Mac Pros are coming later in 2013. Yeah. Yeah! Yay. Uh. Damn it. So I'm st- I'm at this point now where I go, I guess I'm getting an iMac because I need a Mac Pro and I can't wait. I can't. I can't. This thing, this thing, this Mac Pro, I love it to death. I really do. But man, it's taken so long just to launch websites and, and everything. Really? It's- just to launch websites? Yes. Like, no, I'm not kidding. Like, I'll actually click, I'll do www.apple.com. That in itself will come up fine. You get a site like Mashable or something that's got like a bunch of flash in, or, or something in it, and my hard drive just starts thrashing like a mofo. Uh, don't, don't look up any restaurants, and, whatever you do. Oh, I know. But, I mean, this this is the sort of thing where the, the Mac Pro is starting to show its age badly. Mm. And um, I've been having problems recording uh, podcasts sometimes. Like It'll say the disk is too slow. I record to a mm. separate hard drive. Um, I do okay. that. Yeah, I don't record to the main hard drive because I don't. I don't want too much going on with it. Yeah, and I still have these problems, and 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 so mm-hmm. it's time to get something new. Yeah. So I think I'm going to get an iMac. Uh, Casey and I were talking about it before the show started. I was worried that um, like sometimes iMacs uh, or not iMacs, but uh, computers have cutoff dates for when a new operating system can come out. My concern was, well, if I buy something now, is it going to be a cut? Is, is it going to be like? The, the the rev before a cutoff, and you were you brought up a really good point. You said no because these are going to be Ivy Bridge i sevens, and so yeah, it's I, it's really just a generational upgrade. Mm-hmm. They're they're not going from Power PC to Intel. It's there's nothing hugely disruptive in this most recent update, mm-hmm. and so I'm really happy about the fact that I can get an i seven. And there's a mosquito. In my room. Awesome. Great. Fan um, of the show. 
<laughs> and so I think, um, um, oh, it almost bit me. I'm sure it was carrying AIDS, too. No. Um, I, it looks like I'm just going to be getting a, an iMac. I'm, I'm just going to have to because this thing is just... Now, really, I mean, with Thunderbolt, like, you know, get a Thunderbolt external. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, I don't know in actual practice. I mean, in theory, in, in all the reports, you should be able to daisy chain them with mm -hmm. very little degradation. You should be fine with a 27-inch iMac, yeah, really. I'll be fine. Um, I'll be losing Retina display, and I really don't need it. I really don't care. Well, let me tell you why I don't care about the retina display. Mm -hmm. Why don't you care about the retina display? So I did some reconnaissance. I went to my local <laughs> MacBook. Recon. Uh, yes, on, on the new MacBook uh, retina display. Uh, so I went into the Apple store and, you know, I actually got hands on with one. And I went into the store thinking this is going to blow my mind. This is going to confirm everything. I... I don't know how I'm going to be able to walk out of here without one on in my hands. Mm -hmm. And I left the store thinking, well, that wasn't so great. I'm totally okay with my current MacBook Pro. Okay. Now, tell everybody why. Um, so, for some reason, it seems like I was more impressed with the Retina display on the new iPad than I was with this Retina display on the new MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. First appearance is just right off. I mean, it looked like text, obviously, it looks a lot cleaner and sharper, mm -hmm. but overall, it doesn't look that different. Hmm. Um, and so then I go into the system preferences under displays, and I go to see what I can ramp it up to or you know what what's there and we've seen the reports where you can kind of change the resolution it natively by default goes to this and the whole display uh, preference panel mind you has been dumbed down like everything else Apple has been doing like the well, airport it? utility it, it's it's significantly more dumbed down um, which you know for better or worse take it or leave it Depends on who you are. Um, but by default, it'll go to this setting called Best for Retina Display, mm -hmm. which is kind of in the middle. And it's kind of just, you know, your overall best. Everything looks wonderful, but looks normal. Like the, the dock and the menu bar, nothing's really small or really tiny. Then I'm expecting things to be super sharp mm -hmm. and super tiny because they're purporting this uh, 2880 by... 14, uh, 1800. 1800, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, resolution. And, and it's not that. That's not even the native... And even if I ramp up the setting to... The highest setting you can put it on is something called more space. <laughs> um and even if I ramp it up to that, it's only 1920 by 1200, mm -hmm. which is the native regular resolution for the 17-inch MacBook Pro. Right. So it really doesn't look too different. Com I mean, I can comfortably put two uh, Safari windows side by side, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gaining a whole lot of space. I'm not gaining a whole lot of clarity. I mean, text is it. And... I don't have poor eyesight. I, I mean, I read text fine as it is on, on my normal MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could even scale this down and still read it fine. I, I mean, for me, it just seemed like this was really disappointing. And that, um, like I said, even if I ramp it up or ramp it down, there, there wasn't that much to show for it. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, um, I listened to and read some reports after the saying that because I, I walked out of there thinking why the heck are they reporting this 2880 by 1800 resolution when it doesn't use it you know when well, even it the sort OS of does yeah the OS doesn't even use it why are they reporting <laughs> um, there's a third party app that will allow you to get that native resolution but that's retarded if I have I, to use a third party app that's like something Microsoft would do yeah, because it what's it's do, it's doing that uh, that pixel doubling. Yeah, so 
A, it's it's part of how retina displays actually work. It's not a one to one ratio as as we kind of know them inherently. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not going to get that. It's and and like I said, I I listened to some podcasts after the fact and read some reports where it's it's like you've got one resolution, but then each pixel in that resolution has sub pixels, mm-hmm. which makes it more clear. So in total, there's a resolution of 2880, but you never really actually see that. The way the screen is measured mm-hmm. in a one-to-one ratio as we know it natively, you're only seeing, what is it, 14, 1440 40. by 900. Yeah. So that's, that's what it's um, best for retina. That's what its native resolution is measured as, but mm-hmm. each of those pixels... Have subpixels which make the overall picture much clearer and crisper. Mm-hmm. So, no, no, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say. Now that being said, that's that's just for the overall desktop. Um, they're saying that apps like Final Cut, Aperture, and Diablo Three are optimized to actually use the native resolution of twenty eight eighty by eighteen hundred. Oh, interesting. So, like. Hmm. When you're looking at just the desktop, just the native OS, it, it almost scales it down. Again, kind of almost dumbing it down. So you don't freak out in a sense. Or at least this is kind of my interpretation. Like they have this they have this capability. They have this crazy high resolution. Mm-hmm. But like almost for your safety, they <laughs> they dumb it down. And they make it, okay, we don't want your head to explode. So... <laughs> Can we make it look like what you're used to? 1440. Calm down. Everything's cool. <laughs> Keep your mice okay. and keyboard inside the computer. Yeah, we're we're all cool here. We're all friends. Okay. Um, but big apps, big um, professional applications like Final Cut and Aperture, which have a lot of menus, need a lot of screen real estate. Uh, they they're saying that these guys actually use the native the full resolution to actually make use of all that space on a 15.4 screen. Mhm. So you're not thrilled, huh? Well, I mean, all that being said, like my current MacBook Pro is literally the last generate the best in the 15-inch line of the last generation. Mm-hmm. It's 7 months old. It's really not that bad, and I just threw in, you know, a huge hard drive and more RAM. So I'm not hurting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, now well, you you have here in the in the notes that the startup is not much better than your current machine, and yeah. it's got a RAM drive in it. No, a RAM I drive. Listen to me, I'm old school. RAM drive. Burp, burp, burp. RAM drive. Sure. RAM <laughs> card. Um, <laughs> SSD. I, yeah. It's got an SSD, and so I restarted the machine in the store thinking this is going to be crazy, like an air, right? It really, I mean, it really, really wasn't that different than my current startup time with the hybrid hmm. SSD and traditional hard drive that I have in it now. I would have thought that it would have been at least half the time. I would think so, too, but it, it still took a little bit of time. Hmm. Like, I mean... Either we're all kind of conditioned again to think SSDs need to be, and and the the air is is pretty much like that to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. But this guy really wasn't. I got the mosquito, by the way. Well, congrats. <sighs> um, so I was actually considering getting that instead of um an iMac, but I decided against it after you said that it wasn't that if great. If I were you doing production, if this is going to replace your Mac Pro, I mm-hmm. would definitely. You still go with a 27-inch iMac. Really? Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, that, along with a bunch of other things that I've... Look, some people have been writing, excuse me, how great this machine is. I No, guess... it is great for a laptop. Mm-hmm. The 27-inch iMac um, still uses desktop, you know, 3.5 hard drives. It still uses a desktop mm-hmm. CPU. Um, it uses a laptop mobility you know gpu but um in most cases it's still using desktop components Mm -hmm. so you're still better off okay anything else before we move on because i don't want you to forget anything um get apple care because this thing is not upgradable it's not fixable 
I, I mean, if you, you know, keep up with the news and you've heard the reports, RAM is soldered to the board, uh, hard drive is proprietary. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not soldered to the board, it is replaceable, but it is proprietary. And battery is glued. Most things are glued, and there's new screws, of course. Um, so, really, it, it's pretty much like an iPhone or iPad. If this thing breaks or there's anything wrong with it, it's going to be very hard to go down to your local Best Buy or have your, you know, friend who really knows Max open this up for you and, and kind of replace parts. It's, mm -hmm. I would, I would advise it for <laughs> Apple Care for the first time and I can't tell you how long. I hear some fans have tracked you down outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, yeah. they're pushing down the door. Yeah, right? I know, I know. We've, we've got the greatest fans in the world, don't we? <laughs> we do, yes. <laughs> All right, I've been reading the, how uh, the the uh, MacBook Pro with Retina is both um, a blessing because of the way that it's built, that it's better and it's smaller and it's lighter, but it's a curse, on the other hand, because it's not fixable, nor is it upgradable. And so that's another problem as well. And so depending on which... Um, uh, depending on which camp you're in, <laughs> either pro Mac or anti Mac, it could work either way. So, I, I mean, for me, here's the thing: I was in a, I was in a Google Hangout a couple of days ago, and and the argument had turned into an argument was, well, why would you drop all that money on 16 gig? And of course, they're saying, well, you know, the 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 RAM isn't upgradable, and Apple's trying to stick it to everybody. You know, you know, it's just the the nature of everything. You want as the the least number of parts as you can. Now, should RAM and the hard drive be upgradable by the user? I'm I'm of the camp that says, yeah, but at the same time, it just the the, yeah. 60, the extra eight gig itself is really not that expensive because you remember the days when when Apple RAM was really expensive. Well, it still was right up until, I mean, I would even say with, like I said, my, my current MacBook Pro is the last gen before this new update. And, you know, I I would even say for this guy, it was still the same. It was this, the same, like, buy the lowest amount you can from Apple mm -hmm. and then go to Fry's or some third party. Yeah you know, a new egg and order it and install it yourself because you could and you had that option. Now you don't have that option. So your choice is either, you know. Yeah, that's know. true. I'm actually looking up um, how much is 8 gig. Okay, so 8 gig of DDR RAM. Well, all right, I guess it is a lot. <laughs> well, I, it's it uses the new MacBook Pro Retina display uses um, DDR3 and 8 gig of DDR3 on Office Depot goes for uh, 60 bucks, $45 on Newegg. And so, yeah, I guess 200 bucks is expensive. Mm, all right. Yeah, why are you even looking at Office Depot? No, I just did a Google search and, and oh, those okay. came up at the top. So, all right. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> uh, you have written down, what is this lame surface thing? <laughs> um. Yeah, so Microsoft announced a, a little iPad competitor on Monday. <laughs> um, two two iterations. Mm -hmm. They were very, very secretive, and they were very, very Apple-like in the delivery of this whole thing. Yeah. From the from the announcements to the press, to the delivery, to you know everything. It was very, very Apple-like, and the actual thing is very Apple-like. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a direct competitor to the iPad. Sure. It's a Windows 8 uh, tablet. They have two iterations: one with an ARM processor, which is what the iPad has and al has always had, mm -hmm. and a a Pro version with an i5. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. But the ARM expensive. version, yeah, they're both 10-inch tablets. They're both going to have, uh, their ex their main accessory is something called a touch cover, mm -hmm. which is a magnetic cover that just clicks into place, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and closes and is very just thin and, like, velvety and just on the cover. And... Um, <laughs> That's a I, nice you know, face. I'm sorry, my 
fans are just crazy banging down the door. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's it's they didn't mention price. They didn't mention release date, mm-hmm. which is like insane. Okay, you you reserve you you have a date, you have all of these things. You, you have, have a huge to. announcement. You invite all the press, everyone, you want this big thing and you drum up all this fervor, all this hype and then you don't give pricing and release dates like well, that not only that not only did we not get price and release date they didn't even really demo it for no. real yeah, they, didn't they, even they, they showed the thing first it. off they show it <laughs> he's on stage and he's showing you know, Netflix and he looks at it goes and let me get another one because it crashed isn't that you lovely? know what they what? saw I think they saw that Tim Cook uh, at the D conference Tim Cook said that they were gonna Apple was gonna double down on secrecy. Yeah. So then Ballmer was like, "I got this. We're gonna triple down on secrecy. <laughs> we're not gonna tell them shit." Yeah. So the thing crashes on stage, which was embarrassing as hell, and that's like but, that's but, never happened in a Windows demo before. No, never. Um, <laughs> it seems to happen to Windows, doesn't it? No, it's happened <laughs> yeah. to Apple. There's actually a, a quite quite a funny. A demo, a video of um, Steve on stage doing demos and they don't work. Have you mm. ever seen that? No. Oh, I've seen one. No, there's a, there's like a string of them. It's actually pretty funny. But oh, anyway, okay. the the point is is that uh, we didn't get to really see what it was capable of. Bomber gets on oh, stage. Okay. He says, "Well, this thing runs um, Windows 8. and what I, else so, do you need to know? What? Well, I wanted to look. If you're gonna sell something, don't just say it has Windows 8 on it. It's like if Apple got up on stage and said, er, "Look, this laptop runs Mountain Lion." Well, okay, but, but but what yeah, does that mean? Yeah, yeah. What does that mean to the user? You, okay, they've got to get me fired up to want this thing badly. You mm-hmm. you you get these people to fly all the way out there. You don't tell them where it is. You don't tell them when it is. I know, then you, right? Then you get all until, these people in a room. Day, you don't, don't show anything. It mm-hmm. crashes and all you can say is, "Oh, well, it's got this cover with a keyboard in it." And I I, I got to say, the cover and with the keyboard is cool. Nobody got to touch that keyboard. Nobody, nobody got, could even do a typing nope. demo on it. They just can't, they just keep saying it, it's as good as any other keyboard. Yeah, it's it, as good as a Tori 400. It's just like any other keyboard. I'm sorry, this keyboard has no keys. It's literally just outline, square outlines on a felt cover. Mm-hmm. It, this reminds me of that light keyboard from Think Geek, you know, where it's just projecting a light uh, oh, of, of that. keys on, on the desk. You know, you're literally just typing on the desk. I, how fast can you type well, like that? Well, it reminds me of the Atari 400. It had a membrane keyboard, and I didn't have that. I had the Atari 800 that had the real keyboard. Mm-hmm. But the, I tried the 400 in the stores and everything. It was terrible. I wouldn't – I look. People it, complain about the, the on-screen software keyboard on the iPad that mm-hmm. it's, oh, you're just typing on glass. I can't type so fast. Blah, 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 blah. This is going to be the same exact thing. Well, here's the th- here's the thing. It I think that the idea of a keyboard and a cover is slick. I like the idea. However, oh, yeah. I think the implementation of it is just going to leave people wanting more. And I think that they mm-hmm. didn't get people, uh, they didn't allow people to try it there was very, very telling. Well, in right. No, I was going to say, yeah, it's, it's almost very strategic from their point sure. because maybe they did you know, they already had one crash. They don't need more bad publicity. So let's just not demo that thing mm-hmm. right now. And maybe we'll tease it out later. The other thing about this is that it has a kickstand. Now, when I first saw it, I thought, well, that's, that's really nice if you're working on a desk. The problem is that they're talking about this thing being a MacBook Air competitor. Now, think about it. When you have any laptop, I'm not talking about Apple. I'm, I'm, I'm just separating Apple from this whole thing. Uh-huh. When you have a laptop, the bottom of the computer, the bottom of the laptop, is what you rest your hands on. So if mm-hmm. this, this flimsy cover is going to be your support for your hands, mm-hmm. it's not going to work because your hands are going to, from, from what I understand of the, the construction of this thing, I mean, all right, here, look. Here, wait. 
Well, I've you're got, laying your my... hands on the cover, not not the actual tablet. So this right. doesn't have anything to do with the the kickstand. No, no, no. Well, I'm getting to that. What okay. I'm saying is, um, part of the problem is that the keyboard cover. Now, if, now I've got my I've got yeah. my um, my iPad here. If you think about the the cover for your iPad, um, it's not very sturdy. So when you're pushing on it, that along with the the kickstand on the keyboard on the the back of the uh, the tab of the surface, just does not make me think that this thing is going to be very stable when you're when you're using it. Like for example, when you're at a conference, when I'm at a conference, I'll be sitting on the floor cross-legged with my laptop. Are you going to be able to do that with a surface? I don't think so. And so people are saying that this is, oh, you know, that the, they just, what was it? The, there was that, um, that article on Gizmodo that said that um, the, the Surface made the MacBook Air obsolete. I'm like, fuck that. No, it did not make the MacBook Air obsolete. If anything, yeah. it just made yeah. every single other kind of laptop much more viable from from a usability point of view. Now, if mm -hmm. you're using this on a desk all the time, sure, I think it's a good idea. I actually think that the ability to have that kind of power in a small space is good. Yeah. But the implementation of it, the, the whole thing, made me feel like about half an hour after the demo was over, I'm just going, do I really want one of these? Because it's just gonna be shifting a lot. And here's another thing that yeah. I thought of. You're on a plane. You and I mm -hmm. have both been on planes. Have you have you been on a plane with your MacBook Pro? Uh, not with this one, no. Okay. So I've been on a plane with a MacBook Pro, a 15-inch MacBook Pro, and mm -hmm. the the edge sort of comes over the table. Uh-huh. And so are you going to lay your hands on that and bend it? While this thing, well, it, in theory, this thing is going to be a lot smaller than a 10-inch or a 15-inch MacBook Pro. So that means it's also going to, it's not going to come out as far. Mm -hmm. In theory, you know, it may, it, it'll be like the iPad. If you had, if the smart, you know, if you had the iPad propped up and the smart cover was just laying down in front of it. Right. That's, that doesn't come out as far as a 15 inch MacBook Pro. So it may just be just right, you know, in terms of the tray table on Maybe, an airplane. But I, I, I don't, because, you know, those tray tables are what, like only eight inches? I know. Or something. I, 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 I envision these things just not working. I don't know. It, yeah. It, it's, we're going to have to wait. And they're probably not going to be out until, I would say, October-ish. Yeah, no. They sound like it's it's going to be about fall, if not later. Yeah. So. We'll see if it really is the <laughs> iPad killer everyone's thinking oh, it Oh, it's to not going to be an iPad killer. And it's not going to be a MacBook Air killer. And it's not going to no. make anything obsolete. I do think that we are moving in that direction, but th this this implement this, this is the thing about Microsoft that I don't like, and I'm not saying this is a fanboy. I'm saying this is a fan of technology for the last 30 years. Is that I've always seen Microsoft is always doing almost what they should do as terms in terms of this sort of thing, mm -hmm. but not the. It's like it's like the, like Apple would hit the but, target and then they would go off and hit like the yellow off to the side a little bit. Right, and not even that they would do it years later. Right. Like they would they they just barely miss the mark, but it's also years later. Wow. Like if they did this close to when Apple releases it, like if they brought this out three years ago, then I think it would have a much bigger chance. But just like the Zune, it's it's years later. And I think it's gonna be too yeah. little too late. But they couldn't have done this three years ago because they didn't have Windows eight or any kind of touch operating. Well they didn't have ready. Windows eight, but they could have been yeah. making their own hardware a long time ago. Well they, they did could have, have that gotten tablet. out they could have realized, you know, that Steve Jobs is right in the beginning where software and hardware has to be married mm -hmm. to really get it right. Yeah. And for so long they made fun of Apple and Steve Jobs for saying that. And saying, no, it really doesn't. We're just fine, you know, with OEMs and other people making the hardware. And we're just going to keep doing that. Just like they thought they were fine with not making their own stores. And mm -hmm. that Apple was a bunch of crazy people for making their own retail stores. Mm -hmm. Now they're, you know, starting to come up with their own retail stores. Which apparently is going to be the only place you can get these new Surface tablets. Oh, I didn't read that. 
Business Insider uh, either yesterday or today had a report saying that the only place you can get these new Surface tablets are going to be the Microsoft stores and Microsoft.com. Not no Best Buy or Fry's? Retailer. No uh. other retailers. Which, okay, you can kind of say, okay, that's kind of Apple-y, I get it, you know, okay. They're doing this with about 20 stores U.S. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Apple... Apple could have gotten away with this, maybe, if they wanted to with the iPad. And they have over 300 stores U.S. Mm -hmm. But they didn't even do that with the iPad. When the iPad 1 came out, it was Apple stores and Best Buy. Mm -hmm. They still had at least one other distributor in the mix. They didn't go only their stores. Mm -hmm. They didn't, They. I mean, they haven't done that with anything, really. So, that's... That's bold, Microsoft. Go get them. <laughs> Missing the mark. <laughs> yeah. We'll all see right. how that works out. All right. So uh, wh what's next on our agenda? This is all you. So, yeah. I um, installed iOS 6 on my phone because mm -hmm. I'm a developer and you're I get it. You're and very I'm brave. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I have to say I am liking it a lot. There's, I mean, from the keynote, they kind of, I mean, they do and they don't. They kind of make it seem like there aren't a lot of updates to the OS, but there there really are. Like, there's a lot of fine granular updates. There's mm -hmm. not like with iOS five, you had huge kind of tent pole updates, mm -hmm. and with this, um, there's just a very few of those, and then just a lot of kind of interface tweaks. Um, there's new action menus for. You know, okay, so anytime you're in the interface, you bring up a picture, you mm -hmm. bring up a map, a, a link, whatever. A lot of times there'll be this little icon either in the lower left-hand corner or the upper right-hand corner that looks like a box with an arrow shooting out of it. That is called the action button. Mm -hmm. And generally that will be your button to either save the image, to link it to somebody else, um, now the, the little menu that pops up with that has a, has a lot more options. So you can, from just about anywhere, mm -hmm. you can, um, tweet whatever you're doing, the image link, whatever you can Facebook, you can print, you can save, you can iMessage, you can mail. Um, there's way more options for way more links and photos mm -hmm. and, and whatever you're doing almost kind of like an operating system oh, okay. almost kind of like the file structure you know like you you have more options and, and it feels like a fuller operating system in that way it doesn't feel as a as much as a dumbed down mobile system as it used to be <laughs> and of course the so android that, people will be all over that like where are we even able to do oh, that I'm sure. they've, yeah they've been doing that for years and you know whatever um, same with the updated Siri. She can launch apps now. She can get you scores and stats for whatever friggin' sports thing you want. Um, oh, very important. New emojis in the emoji keyboard. Yeah, you My sent me a bunch. Some of them didn't, like three out of maybe 50 didn't show up, but most of them did. Yeah, I had other friends saying the same thing. Um, I think I know which ones they are, but most of them, very good, very good. I'm glad they're on that the new passbook up uh app is not live or a thing at all hmm. there's icon and then you launch it and it's literally just an image there's nothing there it says it's not ready yet that's still cooking maps <laughs> is actually really great mm -hmm. uh, so they're using tom tom's data now and they're actually using vector tiles as mm -hmm. opposed to um google maps uh, JPEG tiles. That's nice. And so they load a lot faster. And m many times I don't even see the tiles load because they're loading so fast. Very it just nice. seems like I could scroll around and, and it's just there already, uh, like one large image. The only time I saw the tiles actually load was when I was doing the turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation when I was driving. And so it, it took a little bit to catch up when I'm actually driving. Mm -hmm. um, and the turn-by-turn, turn, I mean, 
I don't use turn by turn a lot. Like I don't use a dedicated navigation system m most of the time. So I don't know if this is actually a a common thing with GPS dedicated GPS units mm -hmm. or other turn by turn apps. Um, what I found was annoying that it only tells you one step at a time. So if I'm on the freeway and it says continue on the 405, I'm like, okay, great. Where do I get off? Continue on the 405. Okay, great. Where do I get off? Like, <laughs> help me so I can prepare because otherwise I'm going to be way the hell over there. And if I need to get off soon, don't tell me within, you know, 50 feet. <laughs> Turn and I now. <laughs> it's to get over. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it was okay. I, I mean, I didn't, you know, hit anybody or anything like that. I just, well, thought that's that, good. I just thought that was kind of annoying. Um, but it's, it's nice that it, it keeps up and it, it updates fairly quickly, you know, with the, the turn by turn navigation and Siri and it comes in and out over, like I was streaming, uh, Spotify at the time on my iPhone. And so she'll come in and out and saying like, you know, my next step turn, da 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 and then she'll fade and my music will come back in. Mm -hmm. Um and then on the on the actual phone your little uh cursor, you know, is traveling up the up the freeway or the path or whatever right. you're going on. So that was kinda nice. Um Do Not Disturb is fantastic. I don't get a single thing within the hours that I designate. Oh that's why you don't respond to me. Um, <laughs> no comment. I'm kidding. Um, so like I put in, I think midnight to 7 a.m. or something mm -hmm. as my do not disturb hours. Right. Um, and obviously I still get notifications. I still get email, but my phone doesn't light up. It doesn't buzz. It doesn't do anything. Like if I didn't know any better, I would have said like I didn't get any email within that time. And then I look at my phone, I open it up and... You know, I've I've got email like all this, all these things have happened, but you know, it doesn't wake you up, it doesn't disturb you. Mm -hmm. nice. That's fantastic. Um, the new dialer, the dialer for the phone is actually new. It's just got a new look. Mm -hmm. uh, notification center, you can tweet or post to Facebook directly from the notification center, like right up at the top by the uh, weather widget there's two buttons to either tweet or facebook mm -hmm. so there you go for that um there's itunes wi-fi sync which i think is new to to this iteration i believe i don't remember it ever was in five. Oh I, wait itunes oh i don't know no like so there if right from settings i can sync to my desktop or laptops iTunes over Wi-Fi without having to, you know, bust out the the USB cord for it. I thought that was in 5 with um, yeah, with Lion. Well, uh, I'm still running Snow Leopard, so I don't know, and I'm I'm, I'm still running Snow Leopard only because of driver issues, thanks. Mm -hmm. And the whole the wire um the uh, wiretap, thanks. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to have to move to Mountain Lion at some point. I don't know how I'm going to handle that. Because there, no, there are a lot of podcasters that I've talked to that are still stuck in Snow Leopard because of the fact that they can't use a uh, Wiretap Pro. Yeah, no, and I, I, right, exactly. So you're not the only one. It's mm -hmm. not like it's this minor subset of people. Wiretap is a huge application. A lot mm -hmm. of people use it. Why they're so late to upgrading this? I don't know. No, no, it's not them. It's it's the whole sandboxing problem. Oh. Well. So there's no way around it. Hmm. That's so, what are you going to do? Um, cry about it. <laughs> that won't help. No. All right, let's get to rapid fire. All right, rapid fire. Let's get to that. Headshot. So, <laughs> You're just dying to get that in. I had to get that in at some point. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, you, uh, you start this off because you got uh, to take a look at the smart case for the iPad 3. Oh, you have one. That's right. So I, while I was at the Apple store this weekend, um, checking out the new MacBook Pro Retina display, I picked up the new smart case for the iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, Apple released on uh, last Monday alongside everything else. They just kind of didn't really uh, talk about it. What this is is pretty much your smart cover 
with a back case. Mm -hmm. um, so there's really no magnets involved. It's all kind of connected together. It still folds, you know, around and will prop it up and everything like that. Um, but it, it all stays on and protects the back and everything like that. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little, it's not, not really snug on my Mac, on my iMac, uh, on my iMac. <laughs> it's really not snug on my iMac. It's <laughs> not really snug on the iPad, which makes me think that they might have uh, designed this for both the new iPad on the iPad 2 because mm -hmm. the iPad 2 is a little bit fatter. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I don't have an iPad 2 to test this on, but that that's my only complaint. It's like when I hold it, I can kind of feel that there's space in there, mm -hmm. you know, and um, especially if I hold it like like this, then, you know, that little lip there yeah. comes off a lot. For, for those of you that are listening, uh, Casey is feeling up her iPad case. <laughs> um, yeah, so. If you, you talk go. nice to it, it changes colors. Uh, I mean, I, I still like it. I still, I love this smart cover. And, you know, I, I'd been debating on getting one of those hard back cases that Belkin makes to go alongside mm -hmm. the smart cover for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of that perfect marriage of the two. Um, I don't know. I'll keep it on until something else something more fantastic comes along. <laughs> well, speaking of different and fantastic, uh, it's been noted there are pictures floating around of the new iPhone 5 mini connector. It's going to be a 19 pin as opposed to today's current 30 pin. Now, I've said on the show before that I looked at the spec of the 30 pin and there are some pins that are not used. I don't mm -hmm. remember if there are 20, um, 21, listen to me, if there are 11 pins that weren't used. But um, it's possible that the, the, the wires that aren't used are just being removed. They're irrelevant. Right. And then yeah. just squashed down to a 19 pin. Now, of course, this is going to upset some people. Like, I, it's not me, but like we have a bunch of 30 pin connectors around the house. I'm probably going to be the only one with an iPhone 5. So I guess it really won't be that big of a deal for me. But as time yeah. goes on, um, people will just get rid of their 30 pins and replace them with 19s anyway. Because uh, you, right. get, you get, you're gonna, you get, yeah, you're going to get a 19 pin connector with your phone. So, right, but you know they're gonna have adapters, just like the sure. new MacBook Pro. Adapt all uh, the things. Adapt all the things. So, yeah. No. Mm. Mm. Well, um, what's uh, the Foxconn CEO have to say? <laughs> this is funny. It's the um, the Foxconn CEO. Uh, his name is Terry Gao. G O U. He says that the iPhone 5 is going to put the Samsung Galaxy S3 to shame. I don't know if this is true. I only wrote this in the list, uh, the show notes, because I just thought it was humorous. <laughs> well, do you disagree? Do you think the Galaxy uh, 3 is going to be so mind-blowing that the 5 can't even compete? I, I don't know, because we haven't seen what the 5 can do yet. This is true. We don't know what is in store, really. Yeah. Um, so here, there's a... Um, let me see. This is from Focus Taiwan. This is a quote saying, uh, Gao said he has made it a lifetime goal to defeat Samsung, a company with a track record of snitching on its competitors. This is funny because Samsung uh, totally has uh, parts being made in Foxconn. Yeah, th but this continue. Whole, <laughs> this whole Samsung thing is funny because there's Samsung parts in an iPhone. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. He was referring to Samsung's action in 2010 of snitching on four Taiwanese companies in an investigation by the European Commission on price fixing in the flat panel industry. And it goes on and on and on. But I, I, the thing is, is that there is, there is nothing in this report that I read that actually said the iPhone 5 can do this, therefore it's going to be better than the Galaxy 3S. And so I'm yeah. thinking, well, is this newsworthy? I only put, like I said, yeah. I put this in the notes because of the humor in this whole thing. Yeah, it, it sounds like um, Terry Gao is just uh, trying to drum up some news, maybe drum up a name for himself, get him, and and he's definitely <laughs> succeeded in that we are talking about him. Yeah, it, no. It sounds kind of like what Digitimes does a lot, mm -hmm. where they 
they have maybe a part or a fraction of a story and just get it out there. Ah, you know, for the sake of having something to say, pretty much. Right. No. Not right. happening. Whatever. <laughs> Um, I'm super excited about Chevy's new Spark and Sonic lines, though. I test drove the Chevy Sonic at Comic Con really? last year. Yes. Um, oh, okay. That's how I got my press pass. Actually, um, okay. I got it through Chevy. Um, I drove the Sonic and I liked it, but it's not for me. I know that it's good for the market that they're going for, for like first-time buyers and, and young, younger, yeah. the younger crowd and everything. Uh-huh. I'm a, I drive a Trailblazer, so. It's not my kind of car. Yeah, but I just want. the reason why I think this is a good idea is because these are the cars that younger people are going to buy, and they're the ones that are generally going to be the ones that are going to be texting, so or, or using their phone. In fact, I was I was on my way to uh, to the store this morning, and I saw this girl driving while looking at her phone. Nothing happened. It's it's just one of those things where. You just realize later on in life that there are more important things than texting, and so like I, no, texting I, other people. No, not texting other people. Like checking your maps, <laughs> like changing your Spotify. I don't know. Checking. Well, email. I, I try it, to do that with my with the. I just hit the button and and I tell. I mean, I have a four. I don't have Siri, but I tell this thing like play Rush Moving Pictures, and it does. Mm. So that. Um, but yeah, I think that the the Chevy Spark and Sonic are a good first step for putting in these uh, these Siri buttons. Yeah, no, I like the Sonic a lot. I test drove it earlier this year because I was thinking about trading in my cruise for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they didn't have the ones I wanted at the time. I wanted the uh, the turbo uh, six speed manual, mm. and this was like right when they were getting them in, and so they didn't have that spec. Mm-hmm. available yet oh, okay. um but yeah and the spark is pretty much the sonic but all electric right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so um good stuff uh take that ford focus <laughs> ford sync yeah indeed this is um this is going to be quite the interesting competitor to microsoft's ford sync <laughs> There's a functioning Apple One that sold at Sotheby's. We talked about this about a show or two back. Um, it sold for three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. What's even funnier about this is that there was a bidding war. Yeah, of course thing. there was. Of course of, there was. Yeah, there's some guy. There was a telephone bidder and um, an anonymous bidder, and so um, one of the one that I don't remember if it was the guy on the phone or not, but yeah, three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is what one of ten or fewer actually functioning Apple One boards, mm-hmm. and it came with an accompanying handwritten pencil letter by Steve Jobs when he still worked at Atari on how to upgrade the thing. <laughs> I mean, that alone. Well, I mean, I, the whole package is really it's great. A, yeah, it's it's unique, and I, I, I mean, houses in this area are going for that much, and that's why it just. Oh my god, Boggles that's my like mind. half the house here. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. Well, no, there are some houses that go for more than that, but average is like 400 grand. But anyway, um yeah, that's a lot. But mm-hmm. somebody's got a lot of money. And the fact that it was in a bidding war makes me laugh even harder. Yeah, yeah, that Well, it's good. It should have been. And I'm glad that passionate people were bidding on it mm-hmm. and not just some dude who has a lot of money and time to blow. Hey, I want to know who bought it, and I want to know what he's going to do with it. Yeah, is he making a Steve Jobs museum? Can I come visit? You know, it's entirely possible that whoever bought this may actually have either like a functioning Apple museum, or I hope so. or a Steve Jobs shrine, which is creepy. <laughs> No comment. Apple is applying for the .apple domain. Uh, I can of open up uh, top-level domains for $185,000. Uh, I really don't understand the need for these because... We- well, so I, I actually... A lot of uh, companies didn't apply for their own name mm-hmm. as a top-level domain name uh, from this ICANN kind of... Uh, it's not really an auction, but they were they were... You know, having companies submit applications to reserve them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of companies like Facebook didn't even bother applying for any. Mm -hmm. 
I can see why Apple would just for Apple and nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, Apple is actually the only name under Apple that is generic. Yeah. You know, everything else, iPhone, iPad, iMac, what, those aren't generics. Those are weirdo names that mean exactly <laughs> one thing, you know, and they're perfectly crafted to do so. MacBook, everything only ties back to one thing. So if anyone else registers those names, Apple can sue the crap out of them. <laughs> but that'll dot never Apple, happen. Dot Apple, it's like dot orange, dot banana, dot house, dot cat. I yeah. mean, it's it's totally generic, and anybody can grab that up. Mm -hmm. Apple can try and sue them, but it's it's a generic Apple. You know, it's, it's just a random word. Like, they'd have little to no case. Yeah. Much like uh, Facebook doesn't need to, because dot Facebook, obviously... That only means one thing, and Facebook can just go and sue the crap out of those people yeah. to, you know, not use their name. There are, so, some, there are several companies that try to get that book. They're fighting over that. That'll be interesting. Well, that again, that's a generic, and they have mm -hmm. every right to fight over it. It doesn't, you know, book doesn't, I mean, it can and can't mean a lot of things. So companies, you know, have, who have unique names, Facebook, Twitter... They're pretty safe. Um, companies that have generic names, they might want to look into that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's move on to... We're doing a culture now, right? Yeah. A little bit. All right. New theme song. <laughs> All right. Uh, you like have it. this written down. Hackintoshes. So uh, I was thinking about Hackintoshes today. Mm -hmm. And what brought this up, Casey? Um, primarily, I think, the Microsoft Surface. Mm -hmm. as, as I was driving to work today and I'm listening to you know my podcast and everything, and everyone's covering the new Microsoft Surface tablet, obviously. Mm -hmm. and, and they're running all the specs, and I'm like, great, great. It's just like a PC. Great. You know, what am I going to do with that? What am I going to do with a PC? Mm -hmm. I don't own any PCs, blah, blah, blah. Why would I want that? And then it hit me why I would want that. Or maybe want that and? is to make a Hackintosh. Okay. And so then, well, as soon as I got to work, you know, I I looked up online if anybody else. I'm sure I can't be the first to have thought this up. If anybody else had been, you know, the, obviously nobody can actually work on this yet and and actually prove me wrong. But a lot of people were saying like. You know, it's a possibility, but the drivers would be an issue because it's a tablet, and um, Mac OS doesn't have the the touch, you know, screen drivers. iPad does, right. but not Mac OS. So that would be kind of a big hurdle, and somebody would have to probably hand code those drivers for it. Um, but you know, it's an interesting idea. It's a very interesting challenge. At the very least, you know, you could possibly get it running with the Surface just as a display and maybe Bluetooth in a keyboard and mouse because you can definitely do that with Mac OS. Mm -hmm. um, and then that kind of, that search kind of tumbled into this uh, other story I found of a Nook running Mac Classic OS. I saw that movie. today. You posted that. It was amazing. I I posted it as soon as I saw it, and I it just uh, it made me so happy and giddy, and I it makes me want to do this with something, <laughs> like what a great idea because we're all so fixated on, you know, running the current version of an OS on on hardware that's not supposed to run. Can I run Android on an iPhone? Oh, yeah. crazy, you know. Um, but what if you run the the old OS in in something, anything really? Um, and this story is, is perfect running, you know, classic OS and they don't really go into which one it is. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think it's older than OS nine. Um, it looks like probably it OS 7.5, wasn't it? Seven. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit older than the nine. It's still black and white. Um, but running on a nook, that's fantastic. That's amazing because I remember, 
a while ago there was a big Apple emulator for the Atari ST. Oh, that was really? About the last time I think I tried running an Apple operating system on something other than an Apple machine, and you had what, to get the ROMs. And what and, OS would it was it running? Oh, it was System Six or something like that, oh, okay. or, or something. Okay. Um, I forgot what it was called. I have to look it up. But this can't be that hard to do because I mean now. All right, look back then to run Atari. I'm, I'm sorry uh, to run Macintosh stuff on an Atari ST. That was huge because the Mac Pro, uh, the Mac Pros, <laughs> the Mac Pluses were still being sold, and it was a big deal uh, okay. for Apple uh-huh. to not have those chips sold uh-huh. or the ROM or the ROM images out there. Nowadays, Apple probably doesn't care. Because no, you can get anything. From the internet, so yeah. So running the simulator, I th- I think is great. I don't know what you would do with it. No, but... you just impress your friends at dinner parties, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Look, I can run marathon. No, but the, yeah, this makes me think. Can I do that on an iPhone? Yeah. Well, can I, I don't know. Run this on, you know, I don't know what else. That's entirely possible. But I do. If I ever get this running, if you and I ever get this running, you and I shuffle puck cafe black and white version from a million years ago okay <laughs> um i want to talk about hackintoshes real quick i'm not going to talk a lot about it uh i did some research into what it would take to put together a hackintosh and i talked to some people both on twitter and google plus and the problem is this putting together a machine that will run whatever operating system you want to the first time that's not the problem I know. The problem is updating the operating system. I know. You have to jump I've run through, into this. Have you? You have to jump through all these hoops. and It's it's not unlike jailbreaking your iPhone. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. When you uh, jailbreak it and you run you know, another side version of the OS so mm-hmm. that you can do other stuff, uh, you pretty much forfeit the ability to update. Yeah. And then Until the, there's a new update to the hacked version of iOS that you're running. Right. Hackintosh is pretty much the same thing. And with every update that Apple pushes down, you know, they're they're trying harder and harder to break Hackintoshes, to break jailbreaks, you know, to break mm-hmm. hardware that's shouldn't be running what you're running. Right. And so either, you know, you don't upgrade ever or <laughs> Um, you wait you way longer, say the update comes out, you know, one month, you wait two to four months until that update has been, again, rehacked mm-hmm. so that you can, you know, install that. So, yeah, yeah no, it, I, I know it entirely what you mean. So, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not going to be doing this. Um. <laughs> no, it's, it's a huge pain. I ran into this. I made, you know, a Hackintosh a few years back thinking... I'm going to save a thousand bucks and build a Hackintosh. <laughs> Screw you, MacBook Pro or Mac <laughs> Pros, you know, and make this awesome gaming machine. The leg, extra legwork and maintenance and just overall, um, like, surveillance, yeah. like, I had to do on the machine, you know, to just constantly, constant upkeep so that everything would run smoothly was a, a bigger pain in the ass than just running Windows. Sure. So we actually, you know, tore it all down, took everything back, and paid that extra thousand bucks to have a Mac Pro yeah. so that shit would just run <laughs> as it's supposed to. And I wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah. So that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm, I, the, the, the Hackintosh for me was the lack of a Mac Pro this year. Oh, no, and, yeah. And I've heard a lot of people saying that. Like, it, the options are either the iMac, like you're considering, or the Hackintosh, like mm-hmm. you, I guess, were considering. Um, you know, and it, and it all depends on the person. How much more time and maintenance do you want to spend on it? Yeah. All right. All right we moving on to apps? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Casey wanted me to throw that in there, so I did. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, for myself, uh, one of the apps that I use, not regularly, but once in a while, is the WoW Armory for World of Warcraft. The reason why I use it is because I, I play the auction house a lot. Oh, and that's surprising. Yeah, so I don't have to log in. every Because sometimes I don't like turning on my gaming machine, even though I can use it on my Mac. I just don't want to log in. I can yeah. use the WoW Armory to uh, check the auction house, put stuff up, and grab the gold that I got from stuff that sold off the auction house. 
Uh, you can chat with your guild and you can look at gear. You can look at gear upgrades if you want. Of course, you could do that on the website, mm-hmm. but I I use it a lot and um, that's, that's pretty much it. I think it's a great app and I think that Blizzard took a, a really good first step to bringing... Uh, the ability to do something in the game outside of the game. Yeah, no, I think they should definitely expand on this and make more apps, maybe mini mm-hmm. games, maybe bring fishing or one of those, you know, kind of side quests or side a- uh, things out as an iOS app. Sure. Or even like would, tailoring or jewel crafting, you know, actually yeah, do that definitely. in the app. Definitely. Do that in an iOS app when you're, you know, in line at the bank or the store or something. You know, mm-hmm. you can be doing something productive. <laughs> I'm crafting. And you're like, leave me alone. I'm making a sweater. <laughs> All right. What do you have? Um, I think the mo- the app that I've been most excited about in the last week is actually Foursquare, <laughs> which is not new to me and definitely not new to the App Store. But they just updated it. And I think uh, there's been some people talking about this update. It's a beautiful update. It's huge. It it really changes the entire look and feel of the app. Mm-hmm. From you know the splash screen at the start all the way down to actually searching for um, nearby places to check in. And they've added functionality now that you, you can... And I know this is kind of cliche at this point. You can like or heart, you know, people's check-ins. You can comment on check-ins easier. The overall look and feel feels a little bit like Path. Mm-hmm. Where it's very clean, um, very uh, kind of card-like. Every update looks like a card um, stacked, you know, one on top of the other. But it's it's really nice, and it makes everything just really i mean what can i say i'm a sucker for good design and it's really <laughs> well designed nice all right uh we actually have some some emails should we move on to that yay emails uh it turns out that these emails were sitting in the inbox and uh, i haven't mm-hmm. checked them so this, this mm-hmm. is my fault i i mm-hmm. <laughs> and casey is just shaking her head dis- dis- disapprovingly Mm-hmm. Housekeeping. Uh, who's starting? You or me? Uh, you can do this one. Okay. We got two emails from the same person, our, our buddy Agar. He writes, Hey, Michael and Casey. So the European Union mandating USB on cell phones. This is something we talked about in episode 19. The original idea behind it was to reduce the amount of throwaway chargers every time you swap cell phone manufacturers or get a new device. That makes sense. Frankly, while it is possibly a good idea and could reduce the cost of the device, if you opted not to take a charger or the chargers come with a plug for your old cable since the voltage in a page can change between devices, you can't mandate ubiquitous charges or the EU will start becoming design authority in all companies, God forbid. Hmm. There are a whole... (laughs) I'm going to read this the way he wrote it. There are a whole shitload of reasons why a good idea shouldn't be a legislative directive, though. But that's the subject of a different discussion. Looking forward to the next podcast, Agar. Awesome. Um, well, awesome, because we, we kind of touched on this, like you said, in episode 19. We didn't really have any idea why I had heard that the EU had this mandate about... Um, mini USB being an uh, outlet or a port on all uh, cell phones or smartphones right. and that the iPhone was getting around this by just including a adapter, a 30 pin to mini USB adapter mm-hmm. um, when we first heard about the iPhone 5 possibly having a new port adapter there was some speculation that it was going to be mini USB and so this kind of all tied in um, but not being in the EU, we really didn't have any idea. So thanks so much to Agar for uh, cluing us in. <laughs> and our next email is from him, too. <laughs> hey, Michael and Casey. In your discussion of the new iPhone, you were talking about the usefulness of an SD card in the iPhone. This almost sounds like it's about the same episode. Yeah, uh, And basically went down the what's the point, uh, get more memory path. So even though I don't think there's the remotest of chances 
that an, a removable memory module will be, will be incorporated and the best and main reasons for having one would be provision of trans, transportable file system that would enable other devices other than Apple one to access files and even directories great for the file transfer between non-ecosystem devices um, well, ability oh sorry no I was I was gonna say that's true but in in today's world I mean this would have been fine five years ago right but everything but with is wireless cloud storage now. and cloud wireless storage and email I use well I don't even use email really I put everything in Dropbox or Worst case scenario, you know, you run out of space on Dropbox or, you know, you don't want to pay for it. Sure. Um, go to Box.net. Go to Pogo Plug. You know, I have one of those. Um, iCloud. Um, you know, there's so many different cloud storages now that removable storage and even email, I would argue, is, is unnecessary and I don't, I personally don't use it. If I have to get something from one device to another, I just throw it in Dropbox. I don't even email myself. So. It looks like we have a fan with a Harley. Um, yes, he just drove by, so hopefully that won't happen again. <laughs> um, continuing on Agor's uh, email here, um, he also lists the ability to print photos or files from an iOS device for removable storage. Um, a non-geek, even an old granny, could walk into a mall and stick an SD card into a photo printer. You can't do anything with an iPad or iPhone to cut a quick photo to paper. And hello, Apple totally ignored the possibility that some of us need to have hard copies of things once in a while. It's mm -hmm. a good point in reference to photos anyways. Um, oh, and of course, the little hole you talked about is the Giga piezo LED projector letting you project a 9600 9, DPI image really mm -hmm. yeah. in daylight up to 25 feet haha -ha. would be nice though maybe in its 26 I don't know what that's referenced to mm. enjoying the podcast Agar <laughs> Hudley um, okay so yeah there was uh, some talk about this this pull, uh, port on the back, I think we were asking if it was a uh, another microphone port on the iPhone five or another LED flash or camera port. It looks like he's saying that it's a projector of some astounding DPI and distance. I would say maybe. <laughs> All right, we got an email from Mike Sheritz. He writes, "I've been a listener from episode one. Thank you." And Yay. I'm a longtime PC builder tinkerer who recently moved to Mac. Yay. Yay. I've got a 750 gigabyte hybrid HDD that I want to swap into my MacBook Pro late 2008. And I yeah, need a bit of direction one. on how to do it. I, underst I understand the screw turning part. What I'm curious, I think what he means is installing. What Actually, I'm yeah, putting it in. What? Like, yeah, no, I'm agreeing. I think oh, okay. he, he understands how to actually yeah. get it in there. What I'm curious about is how to transfer the files using just the MacBook Pro. Is it as simple as uh, performing a time machine backup on the old machine, swapping drives, and importing? I would assume that I need some version of OS X on the new drive first. I'm running Snow Leopard right now. High five, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm doing this properly so I'm not repeating steps and ultimately wasting an evening mucking with my MacBook Pro. <laughs> I also know that I'm proficient enough on the technical end to do this without genius help. I just don't have the ex experience yet. Is there any other steps I need to be taking? Any other precautions I need to worry about? Thanks in advance. So Yay, Mike. Well, good job. Um, I can actually speak from experience. I mean, I've done this quite a few times with MacBooks and iMacs, and I just recently did exactly this uh, with the same 750 hybrid drive um, on a MacBook Pro. Um, every time I do this, and any time I actually update the operating system, like I was telling Mike before the show, um, I actually do this as well. So, yes, the, the time machine, ever since time machine has been a thing, it has been my method of backing up and transferring stuff over. Mm -hmm. Now, you can do this to an external hard drive, to a time capsule if you have one, or um, lately, I've just been literally, like in this case, you can swap out the hard drives and then just have that old hard drive that you just took out of your MacBook Pro, 
act like that's the time machine backup. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? So you swap the hard drives out. You t don't do, say, like, in, okay, in the instance I just did with this 750 hybrid drive when I just did this, I didn't do any kind of backup. I didn't do any kind of exportation or anything because I'm swapping out hard drives. Right. If I'm updating the OS, then I would do a, a backup and restore. Um, but with hard drives, I literally just opened it up, took the current hard drive out, installed the new hard drive fresh, didn't do any kind of formatting or anything like that, um, and then popped in either a disk or like with Lion, I actually have the USB key so then I can install that from there. Mm -hmm. So from there, you in start the installation. Um, Lion will just start going. It uh, will ask you which hard drive do you want. Uh, usually with a fresh brand new hard drive, you won't even have to format it. It'll just go. You might have to, but um, the, the actual install will tell you. Um, in any case, you run through the install. That's first. And then after the install, much like if you ever bought a brand new iMac, it goes through that setup process. Mm -hmm. You put in your name, your number, your address, la la la, register with Apple. It asks you if you want to transfer anything from another Mac, from a time machine backup, or don't transfer at this time. Mm -hmm. Now, generally, before Time Machine, this would be the part where you would put your old Mac into transfer disk mode or target disk mode, hook it up with FireWire, and then transfer from an old PC. Um, but in this case, you can actually do the Time Machine backup with an old um, hard drive. So if you have a external enclosure or like I have an actual hard drive dock. I have that where too. It looks like a little toaster, the, and you just black X connect right. It connects through USB, and you just slide the the hard drive in like a toaster, and then it uh, pretty much mounts like an external hard drive. So then, um, right within the setup, it transfers over everything. Um, much like Time Machine would, it, it analyzes the hard drive and the user's preferences, and you can check and uncheck and get really granular if you only want to transfer over uh, users and preferences, mm -hmm. or if you want to transfer over everything, or just uh, documents and not programs or programs or whatever. So depending on how much stuff you have, it'll take about an hour to two hours, but you get all that done right out of the way and everything's transferred over and it's pretty much how just exactly like you had it before. Um, preferences, settings, everything's the same with the sole exception of passwords. Um, Wi-Fi, yeah. I mean, it'll know, say, like the Wi-Fi name, but you'll have to put in the password at least once, stuff like that for keychain access, it'll want you to verify, so it'll ask you for passwords right, once yeah. in the beginning, but that's about it. Um, everything else will be there, will be beautiful, like everything was as you left it. <laughs> I wonder if that's a pain in the ass for developers, because I haven't done that yet, Like because you have to have your digital Actually, certificates and everything. Uh, well, I mean, certs are just like kind of any other file, you know, they transfer over, mm -hmm. they install kind of like a, a program, but then you, again, you, you, just, have to, you just um, put in your password and it verifies, so. Okay. All right, I think we are done. Yes, thank you all for emails. Keep them coming if mm -hmm. you guys have um, Questions about, you know, hardware installs, software installs, that's great stuff. Both me and Mike have done plenty of it. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, if you have questions about upgrading or how do I, you know, transfer something from, you know, an old ass uh, <laughs> tiger machine to, you know, lion or whatever, um, we can definitely take all your answers and questions at the infinite loop show at gmail.com right all right let's uh let's go wow we had a long show this is good hour 20 it was a l hey you know you waited a week and a half and you get rewarded <laughs> you're welcome listeners all right if you want to contact us i am at star mike on twitter casey is k-a-c-k-a-s-o casey queso the casey not the cheese on twitter 
<laughs> the infinite loop show at gmail.com and of course the infinite loop show.com uh, am I leaving anything else Google Plus Facebook what else all the things we are on it pretty much network yeah. all the things <laughs> yay alright thanks for watching listening and we'll talk to you soon bye, bye. I like math